Hello and welcome back to Cloud Developer. Last time we installed GPT-2, the uh, Artificial Intelligence Coherent Text Generator in an Amazon EC2 instance. And that was amazing, that worked out very well. And you have access to it from anywhere you are because you can connect to the cloud. But this time we're gonna install GPT-2, the same technology, this time on your Mac OS operating system. And in order to do this, we're gonna follow in the following steps. This time involve a few different things that we did done with Amazon EC2, not only because we're not gonna be using Ubuntu, we're gonna be using uh, OS X, but because we need to create a, a virtual environment in Python and a few more things that we will cover here step by step. So the first thing we need to do is to create a folder. I have one here ready on my uh, desktop and I'm gonna move on to it with CD. All right, and with LS, I can, I can confirm that this folder is uh, empty. And then from here, um, I already have installed Python 3 in my machine, but I'll do it again just in case. So it's brew install Python 3. All right, so depending on where you have homebrew installed or updated, it could take up to five minutes. So for me, it didn't take that much because I had it installed uh, recently. Okay, so from here, what we're going to do is we're gonna clone this repository here, which is where all uh, the magic is uh, hosted by OpenAI. So what we need to do is come to this green button, copy the path, and then we're gonna move back onto our terminal and do git clone and paste that address. And it's gonna copy the repository into our local folder. It shouldn't take very long. And now uh, we can confirm that we have a new folder created. We're gonna move on to it, cd gpt2. All right, and this one has a bunch of uh, files and folders inside. So the next thing we need to do is let's create a virtual environment so we can contain all our dependencies and our requirements in one single place. So in order to do this, we're gonna do Python 3 dash env vm and then the, uh, I don't know how you call that uh, character. And I'm just gonna leave all these commands in the description of the video so you can only copy paste if you need. And that's creating a virtual environment in my machine. It's created, but now we need to activate it. So but to activate that, I'm just gonna put a dot venv dash gpt2 bin activate. And as you can see on this side of the screen, there's a VM GPT-2, which is the name of a virtual environment. It means that I'm already inside the virtual environment that we created. So now that we're inside, we can start installing all the dependencies for GPT-2 to work. And the first one is going to be using pip3 install TensorFlow. This time we're gonna use uh, version 1.15. Last time we used 1.12. And again, this one could take a few minutes if you don't have it installed before, I have. So for me, it went quite quickly. So let's move on. Now we need to install with pip3 install dash r the requirement file, requirements.txt, which is a file that is located here. Uh, requirements uh, ls. Okay, let's try again, pip3 install minus r requirements.txt. I probably had a typo somewhere. Okay, that went uh, very good. Now, there are, uh, up to today, to the day of this recording, there are four models that you can play with, you can download and play with. And if we go to the developers MD link, in here you can see there are four different links that you can use. One is a 124, 355, 774, 1558 models. Obviously the biggest model is gonna give you the best quality of text generation, but it's also about 6.2 gigabytes in size. So for today, I'm just gonna install the, the small one, but it's exactly the same process for the, the rest of them. It's just, it takes longer and it's bigger files that we need to deal with, but for this a tutorial, let's leave it at the smaller model. So to install that, I'm gonna go back to the command line, I'm just gonna clear my console, and I'm gonna type Python 3, download model, and we're gonna use the, what's it, 124, 124M. And depending on your internet speed, once again, it's gonna take a little bit. Mine, my internet is quite fast. This is downloading at 25 megabytes per second. 
Uh, and this time it's actually using my own internet. With Amazon EC2, it was using the uh, the connection from Amazon to the repository. So your connection at home didn't have much to do. Uh, but in this case, it's all coming to my local machine, which is what we really want to do. And as you can see, it's getting close to finishing which is pretty exciting. So that was the smallest model. As I say, this one is not too large for you to play with. Now, uh, once we have them loaded that, we need to make sure that we are using that particular model. So in order to do that, we have to look for, so I'm gonna go to go to the uh, CDSRC and I'm gonna use Nano to modify uh, the interactive conditional samples PY. By default, it's already here 124. So uh, because we downloaded this model, we don't have to change anything. But if I had downloaded the, the larger model, which is 1558, 558, we just need to change that here. And I might as well here in top K, let's put that at 40. All right, but because I didn't download the larger model, I'm gonna restore back to how it was. So the only change I did in the end here is the K equals 40. Now to, act, to save an exit from Nano, what I need to do is this option right here. So it's uh, control O and then yes, uh, wrote 92 lines and then command, uh, control X to exit, all right? So now that we have done that, we are ready to run the model, so let's hope uh, that is gonna work, Python 3, uh, and I'm already in SRC, so interactive conditional samples.py, enter, and it's gonna start opening the model, no such file directory, model syncor, JSON. All right, let me just move one folder out. Okay, so Python 3, SRC, interactive conditional samples. My bad, a couple typos there, but uh, the last line is the correct one. I'm gonna leave that in the description for you to play. And good news, we have arrived to the model prompt. So in here is where we're gonna start actually, actually playing with it. So let's give it a go. I'm gonna see the three little pigs, pugs, pigs text. And let's copy paste just some random text and see what kind of stuff we can get. So this is the original three little pig story. So I'm just gonna paste that here, enter. And from here on, my computer is gonna start chugging information. Uh, depending on how powerful your computer is, it's gonna take longer because we're using the smaller model. It might not take all that long, but still we have to wait a little bit. So I'm gonna cut here and I'll come back when it's finished. All right, it's done. It took about a minute and a half, so not that long, which is really good. And as you can see, this is the prompt that we copy pasted from internet. Once upon a time, there was an old mother pig who had three little pigs, blah, blah, blah. And I press enter, and then this is the reply back that we got. The AI generated this text based on this. This is not great text because we're using the smaller model. Now, we had actually downloaded the 1558M model, it would be a lot better, I can guarantee. It's still pretty good. I mean, there's no typos, there's no syntax errors. It's just more, it does, it's not as aware of the context of the story as it could be with the larger model, which is also available for you to download and play. So this is amazing because every few months or so we're getting a bigger, larger model, more complex and more uh, comprehensive and robust to play with. So if you follow this step, hopefully it's going to work for you on your end. If you want to finish playing with it, uh, you press a uh, control C. Brings me back to uh, to my console prompt. I can clear the prompt, uh, the console. And if you want to deactivate your virtual environment, you just write deactivate. And as if you can see, I'm still inside. Deactivate and I'm outside of my environment again. And with that, I'm done for today. I hope you liked it, guys. GPT-2 is an amazing tool. You can use it in many different ways. I am the co-creator of storifyapp.com, which is a site for people to come together and write stories uh, with humans and with uh, the AI component, which is quite exciting. So check it out if you have the time. Also, subscribe, comment, share if you like it. I'm gonna be putting these videos every week. If you wanna know about cloud development, about web development, you're gonna find all about that in here. My name is Carlos Salazar. See you next time.